Hi there everyone, my name is Nicholas and I'm going to be walking you through today how to do the pre-work for the Aviation Merit Badge. So if you have the uh, Merit Badge workbook right here, you can get it from meritbadge.org. It would be great if you could follow along. I'm going to be mainly uh, walking through requirement number one, so if we can go through that and get you guys ready for the flight day that I'll be holding pretty soon. So first of all, I'm just going to introduce you to our little friend here. This is the uh, Flight Test Tiny Trainer Airplane. So this is the plane that you'll be building if you come to the event and um, you know, might even get to fly it too if everything works out the way we want it to. So that's the plan there. All right, cool, so let's get off, off to the races here. So define the term aircraft. Well, the FAA, which is the Federal Aviation Administration, defines aircraft as anything, anything that flies essentially that is made by man. So obviously birds would not be aircraft, but anything between an Airbus A380, which is a massive airplane, and a small little um, quadcopter that might be this big is considered an aircraft. So any of those things count. So a couple different kinds that we have are um, the commercial aircraft, which are of course for um, transporting people, goods, anything like that to make a profit. Um, sport aircraft are typically more for recreational purposes. Those are for fun so that people can uh, go out for a fly, have a great time on a Saturday afternoon. Um, then we have unmanned air vehicles, UAVs, such as airplanes, the one I just showed you or maybe quadcopters or other kinds of multi-rotors that could be used for racing, for aerial video, for fun, all that good stuff. And then you get other, a whole bunch of other categories. You have things like fighter jets, like all, basically anything, helicopters, all that stuff. So yeah, what I'd like you guys to do is to go through the workbook again. Um, there's a whole bunch of slots if you go through, um, look some up, figure out the main um, parts of each of them and to learn what you have to do there, that would be great. All right, moving on to the next page. So to talk about the main ways that um, full-scale, which is full-size, like the kind that carry people, full-scale airplanes work, uh, let's talk about piston airplanes. So the, the way that we classify them is by their engine type. We have piston, turboprop, and jet that we're going to talk about. There's also subcategories under each of those. So a piston airplane runs on the same thing that your car runs on. You know, you've got between maybe four and eight cylinders that um, use an internal combustion engine to create power, and that power out of the shaft comes out and spins a propeller. So that's how that works. It's pretty simple. And these are really good for smaller aircraft. Typically, um, it really depends, but usually under eight people or so, but really you'll find, you'll find exceptions all over the place. I'm actually gonna skip to jet right now because the jet will help me explain turboprop. So the way a jet works, it's a little bit more complicated, but it's, it's pretty neat because it's a really cool engine. So you have compressor fans on the very front end of the engine. We'll say this is the front, so the air is coming this way, the plane's moving this way. So your fans are going this way, and they compress the air and create a high pressure zone right here. So there's a lot of, a lot of air concentration. Then right here, fuel is injected in, from little injectors into this combustion chamber, and it combusts. Because in order for fuel to react with air, which means combusting, it has to have a lot of air in presence. And when it does that, it creates a lot of thrust. So the thrust is pushed out the back of the aircraft and that propels it forward. Now that's how a normal jet works. But um, also when it's propelled out the back, first of all, it spins other um, fans that are, or not the fans, turbines, that are what spin the compressor fan. So that the whole thing can kind of keep repeating itself and become a cycle. Now you get things like fighter jets use primarily the thrust for the propulsion because fighter jets don't have to be as efficient as commercial aircraft. Their main goal is to be really fast. Now, commercial aircraft, on the other hand, what they use is a, what's called a high bypass. So the, um, the turbines in the back spin a really big fan that goes outside of the jet, and it actually uses that thrust to um, create, or sorry, the, um, the spinning of the big fan to create a thrust, whereas a low bypass fighter jet uses the thrust of the actual interior of the engine to create thrust. That's a little bit confusing. You can definitely spend some more time looking it up because it's really interesting stuff. It'll prepare you for your merit badge. Third of all, turboprop airplane. Let's talk about that a little bit. So a turboprop kind of combines piston and um, turbine engines, jet engines. What it does is it uses the jet engine with the compressors and all and creates same deal, uh, high pressure zone combustion. But instead of creating thrust out the back, it spins a turbine that spins the propeller. So it's almost like the same deal with the high bypass fan, except there's no thrust being created by the actual combustion. It's just spinning the propeller. This is really good for um, maybe moderate sized airplanes. Usually, I mean, it really can't be anything, but um, usually 10 people are up. It really, it really depends though again. So that is our main deal there. All right, moving along to um, part B of this. 
we're going to talk about the main um, main factors of aerodynamics, how they affect airplanes. So we're about our tiny trainer here, real quick. All right. So the first four I want to talk about are thrust, weight. Uh, excuse me. Well, first of all, let's just talk about thrust and weight. So thrust is driven by the propeller. It gives thrust right here. Um, so the opposing force of thrust is drag. Drag is anything that pulls backwards in the airplane. So thrust pulls forwards, drag opposes it that way. Now lift, as you'd probably guess, lift is what make the, makes the airplane go up. So lift, yeah, we'll talk about airflows in just a second. Lift opposes the airplane's weight. So I, sorry, I misspoke earlier with the thrust and drag, or thrust and weight. Thrust opposes drag, because drag is anything that causes the airplane to um, resist flow forward through the air. Thrust resists drag, pulls it forward. And then lift makes the airplane go up. Weight pulls it back down. So that's our, our main deal there. Now, um, if you see the big diagram here, you can uh, fill that out. You should have enough information from that to fill out the diagram. And then moving along to control surfaces. This is how you manipulate the airplane's movement. Because if you have no control surfaces, it's just going to fly forward until it indefinitely crashes, which would be kind of awkward. So here, let's talk about our tail feathers a little bit. As you can see right here, on this airplane, it's kind of simple because it's actually a trainer airplane, a really good first airplane. So this right here, we call the elevator, this part that moves up and down. Now this part is called the horizontal stabilizer because it doesn't move. The elevator moves like this. The horizontal stabilizer doesn't move. It keeps the airplane tracking straight. So if you point it up like this, it'll stay that way. Now if the elevator moves this way, the airplane's going to go down. And if the elevator moves this way, it's going to go up. That's called pitch. So pitch is your up and down. It's controlled by the elevator. Now, a similar thing happens with the rudder. You have your rudder right here. So let's see if we can make it. Our rudder goes back and forth, as you can see like this. Now, this is called yaw, which is Y-A-W. So yaw is how the airplane turns this way. So that rudder creates yaw. So we've got our pitch like this and our yaw like this. So that's the deal there. And then, of course, we have our thrust. Same deal. That's our third control surface. So this plane has three different means of control. Now, if, uh, most planes have four, actually. So if you see our wings right here, most planes would have ailerons right here, which ailerons control, point it this way, control the roll of the aircraft like this. So the way it would work is one aileron would go up and one would go down. And if this one goes up, it would turn this way. And if this one goes down, that one goes up, it would turn this way. So that controls our roll. So those four main control surfaces are the primary control surfaces. Now you, excuse me, you also have things like um, flaps and slats and air brakes and all kinds of other stuff that could factor in to your aircraft's motion in a real full scale um, aircraft. But for something like a trainer like this, we try to keep it simple. The reason that we don't have ailerons in this plane um, in short is because we have these very pitched wingtips. Now the way that this works, we're gonna talk about airfoils in a second, but once you, when you turn the airplane like this, this half of the wing is creating more lift than this half so it pulls itself back up. So this plane inherently stays very stable when you fly it around. Um, it's not really good for doing um, tricks or aerobatics or stuff and stuff like that, but it's the kind of plane that you can just fly around and learn how to fly for the first time and it'll do a really nice job staying level and avoiding crashing. So that's how that works. All right, so we covered that pretty well. Let's move on to the next topic here. All right, airfoils, as I've been talking about a lot. So, um, airfoils are mainly governed by Bernoulli's principle. Uh, Bernoulli was a mathematician who did some study in the field, field of aerodynamics. He actually started it off primarily. So you can see right here, this wing has a, as an airfoil, as do most wings. Um, so the way that an airfoil works, and actually let me pull up this guy right here. This is our little airfoil on the uh, worksheet, if you can see that. So the way that it works is, um, based on Bernoulli's principle, air that goes over the wing has to travel a farther distance than an air going under the wing. So when those, so the, the one under is going straight and this one goes over, once they meet up, this one will have traveled faster. And his principle states that airflow moving over a surface faster creates a low pressure zone. And what that low pressure zone does is it creates a, a bubble essentially of low pressure above our airplane and it pulls us up, creating lift. And lift opposes weight. Okay. Um, so yeah, exactly. You didn't answer because you're a camera. That's all right though. All right. So yeah, that's how our airfoil works. Now there's a bunch of different kinds of airfoil. There's this airfoil, which is a really good one for training. It's a little bit of a slower airfoil because it's a little taller and uh, less wide. Um, 
There's also airfoils that are really good for speed or for um, 3D aerobatics. Um, they're all different, so we can talk about those on flight day. If you want to look them up yourself, that'd be really good. So yeah, we talked about that. Um, earlier we talked about our elevator, our uh, rudder, and our ailerons that this plane doesn't have, but we talked about those that'll fill in your next section in the worksheet. All right, cool. Let's talk a little bit about actual flying. This is kind of important because flying is important. All right, so when you're taking off on an airplane, what you want to do is you're going to pull back on the elevator, kind of towards your belly button if you're flying a model plane, because that what that'll do is it'll pitch the elevator up and it'll make the plane go up. Now with the rudder, you just want to keep things straight. And with your ailerons, you also want to keep things straight. And when you're taking off, another quick little thing is you always want to go into the wind because to take off with an airplane, you need to have a certain amount of airflow over the, the wing. We just talked about Bernoulli's principle. It's the same thing. The faster the air is moving, the more lift you'll get. So if you point into the wind, say that there is a 10 mile an hour wind, you'll already have 10 miles an hour of wind going into your plane. If you point downwind, you'll have 10 miles an hour going this way. So you have to throw this plane at least 20 miles an hour to get it to even take off, which is a little bit sketchy. It'll go a lot faster. It's a lot harder to control. So we always take off into the wind like that. So, all right, now we our next thing is a straight climb. To do a straight climb, all you're gonna do is you're gonna pitch up like this, just keep it going straight. Um, with this plane, you don't wanna do this because it won't work. Um, this, this motor doesn't have enough thrust to go straight vertical. Some planes do, I have a, I have a couple that do, and they're a lot of fun, but not this one. Um, this one's fun, it's just it doesn't do vertical. So that's what you wanna do. Keep it about maybe 15, 20 degrees, just stand that elevator and use the rudder to keep yourself straight. Now, if you wanna turn, you're gonna to wanna to turn the rudder. It's gonna bank the wingtip. That's just how the aerodynamics works. It's gonna turn like this. And then turn the other way, and to, to get out of the turn, hit the rudder the other way, it'll level out. That's how this plane works. And then, let's see, a climbing turn, do them both at once. Pull up the elevator, turn the rudder, turn. It's pretty simple. All right, descending turn, same deal going down. You're gonna push down your elevator, turn, descending. Uh, straight descent, you guys are pretty smart. You're gonna go down, go to keep it straight. And then landing, landing can be tough. Same deal with landing, you wanna point it into the wind. We're gonna say our wind's coming from that way in my very, very windy um, den up here, or computer room. So you wanna point it down, not too steep, because you're gonna auger it into the ground, which would not be comfortable. So you wanna take it just about like this, maybe a little steeper. And then what you're gonna do, right before you hit the ground, you're gonna wanna slow down your propeller, maybe even stop it, and you're gonna pull up, let all of the, the speed bleed off of the wings, and you're gonna plop it down just like that. Because this plane doesn't have landing gear, so this is called a belly lander. It's perfectly fine, that's what they're designed to do. So yeah, you take it down, kind of uh, decent speed, kill your throttle, plop it right down. We call that flaring in the aviation world. So that, that type of thing takes a lot of practice. It's important to know theoretically, but again, it takes a lot of practice. So don't, don't be concerned if the first time involves a, uh, a less than perfect landing. No, no worries there. All right, so in terms of certification, there's a number of different pilot certifications. You get your sport pilot, your recreational pilot, your private pilot, and your instrument rating. So the most common um, type of pilot's license is the private pilot license. It gives you the most um, amount of privileges without having to go get your commercial license, which takes a lot of time and money. So I'd like you guys to go and um, research sport, recreational, private, um, and instrument rating so that you can figure out what each of those are and what they mean to, your pilot, to a pilot. All right, so that covers requirement one. Um, that's the main meat of this discussion. I just wanna real quick talk about what we're gonna do next um, so that you guys can be prepared for the event that we're gonna be doing soon. So for requirement two, we're gonna be doing options, let's see, options E and F. So those talk about the avionics in an airplane. Those are basically all the gauges, dials, and lights and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna do a quick little um, summary of what each one does. I want you guys to go look up a little bit more learn what they do, and um, you're gonna do a little bit of a uh, little bit of design challenge. So your, your attitude indicator, let's get a plan out. The attitude of an airplane typically refers to whether it's pointing like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, all that kind of stuff. So um, your attitude will tell you what uh, where the horizon is and how your airplane is relative to it. You guys can look this up more online to learn how that works. Your heading indicator is a really, really fancy name for a compass, and if you are Boy Scouts, you probably know what a compass is. Moving along to the altimeter. The altimeter tells you how high you are, typically above sea level. Um, it can be above ground level, but it's usually above sea level. The 
airspeed indicator tells you how fast the airflow is moving over your plane. It's not how fast you're going into ground speed. So if there is a 20 mile an hour headwind from here and you're going 60 miles an hour, you're actually only, you only have 40 miles an hour of um, airspeed, if that makes sense to you. The turn and bank indicator is something that a real airplane would use to help it turn and bank. With RC airplanes, we just turn and bank, but for them, they wanna try and keep things smooth and be efficient with their airspeed. So it shows them a horizon and it allows them to turn and bank. And then our vertical speed, it also might be known as a variometer, so it tells you your vertical speed. It's how fast in either feet per second, it's usually feet per second, how fast you're going up. So if you're climbing, say you're climbing at 100 feet per second, feet per minute, feet per second, you're really fast. Um, it would tell you that. Your compass tells you you're heading, it's the same thing. Your navigation, um, your GPS is usually integrated into the airplane. This could be a pretty complicated system that um, tells you, that helps you navigate. Uh, communication radios let you communicate with other pilots so that you can avoid collisions which are really not good not a desirable thing the tachometer is something that tells you how fast your engine or your propeller is spinning so it would tell you in rotations per minute or rpms how fast you're spinning which is really important to know so that if your prop is spinning too fast or too slow you know how to adjust the engine properly and keep it well tuned all right two more the oil pressure gauge and the oil temperature gauge they tell you the size of your oil so if your oil is too hot or too cold or has too much or too little pressure, you know how to adjust the engine and um, make it perform optimally. So that is the deal there. Now for your, your assignment to bring to the uh, event, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take all of those things we just talked about. It's, it's in the workbook that you can download from merfadge.org. You're gonna go through those things and um, make a, you're gonna design your own cockpit. So you're gonna, I want you to look, um, go online and you can look and see what some cockpits look like and you can decide where you want each of those instruments and where you want all of those things we just talked about. So that way we can all talk about how they work, what they are, and a good place to put them. So the really important things you're gonna to wanna to put right in eye level, maybe less important things you can put a little bit up. So just kind of think about it, do the best you can do. And we'll talk about it at the, at the event. All right, requirement three, we're gonna do completely at the event, so no worrying about that. Same deal with four. So moving on, five real quick, I just kinda of wanna intro this one, we're gonna be finished up for the day. So requirement five, I want you guys to go and look up three different um, different kinds of careers in aviation. So that could be things like aerospace engineering, being a pilot, um, engineering, all the kinds of stuff. So look those up, um, try and find some that interest you, and then pick one, and then you're gonna figure out the education, training, experience. You guys can read, you know what to do. So go through that, fill that out, and then we'll talk about it on uh, flight day, which is what I'm dubbing this. So that is the plan there. All right, so guys, thanks for watching. Um, this is pretty much most of what you need to know to get ready for flight day. All you need to know is the things I already talked about. Go through, if you guys could um, finish off writing, it down, writing down your explanation of all those requirements we just talked about, that'll get us all ready to go so that when we get there on flight day, we can build some airplanes, have some fun, talk about some more, some more good stuff, and get you guys your aviation merit badge. So thank you, my name's Nicholas. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll be seeing you soon.